Chapter 1. Forming tribes is part of human nature, and tribes cannot exist without leaders. Seth Godin defines a tribe as a group of people with a common goal connected to an idea under a leader. Throughout our history as humans, we've always been part of one tribe or another. For a group to be a tribe, two things must be in place, a shared interest and a way to communicate. Some years back, tribes used to be confined within particular geographical locations. A tribe might be people living in a village or a group of gun owners in Sacramento. Even companies have always created tribes around their markets and offices, tribes of employees or consumers. Now, with the inception of the internet, geography is no longer important. More than ever, influential tribes, most of which could never exist before, are now forming all over the world. Tribes you buy things with, tribes you work with, tribes you travel with, with tribes where everyone knows one another's name. And fortunately, there is an explosion of new tools, such as Meetup, Facebook, and Twitter, to help lead the tribes we're forming. All these are more of a reason for you to step up now and take the lead. People want growth. They want, can want connection and change. The market needs you, and the tools you need to lead effectively are just there waiting. The missing piece of the puzzle is you, your vision, and your passion. There can't be a tribe without a leader, and there can never be a leader without a tribe. Thanks to the new era ushered in by the internet, it is easier than ever to be a leader, and your tribe needs you. If you have the desire to lead, then you can. This is your tribe. Just make sure the moment is right and the cause is right. Generous and authentic leadership trumps the selfish efforts of people doing it just because they can. Chapter 2 The modern marketplace is thirsty for change, and that is something that can only be driven by a leader. So why would you set up and take the lead? And most importantly, why now? As tribes continue to sprout and thrive all over the world, there's a great shortage of good leaders. The world needs you. Like never before, corporations are expecting all their employees, not just the boss, to lead. With the way today's workplace is structured, there's an easy avenue to change things. And individuals have more leverage than ever before. Moreover, the marketplace is generously rewarding individuals and organizations who change things and create exceptional products and services. Leadership these days is thrilling, engaging, fun, and profitable. Contrary to what you've probably heard, leadership isn't difficult. In fact, you already have the skill sets you need to make a big difference. It doesn't matter the position on which you currently are on the corporate ladder. You don't have to wait until you get the right job or the right title. You can start leading now. One thing you should bear in mind is that being a manager and being a leader are totally different. While management is all about manipulating resources to get a known, a known job done, leadership is about creating change that you believe in. Unlike managers, leaders don't really care about organizational structure or the official blessing of their company. Rather than use threats and bureaucracy to manage people, they use passion and ideas to lead them. What distinguishes a leader from a manager is a manager's ability to create change. Gone are those days when marketing was all about making expensive ad campaigns. Marketing is now more about engaging with the tribe of consumers and delivering services and products with stories that spread. What the market wants now is change. It doesn't want the same thing it wanted yesterday. Some years ago, it used to be important to put things like established 1902 on the package of products or next to a company's name. Now, it's a big liability. The constant drumbeat of advertising has taught us to be restless in the face of stability. This rush from stability is a tremendous opportunity for you. Seth Godin. We are all thirsty for new and exciting things. Nobody watches an entire YouTube video that they don't find exceptionally interesting. No one shares a boring email or tweet. No one invests in a boring stock with little prospect for enormous growth. In a nutshell, if being able to create the change your tribe believes in is the essence of leadership and the market needs change, then the market needs leaders. Chapter 3 The key to inciting a movement is to enhance communication within your tribe. Every great leader knows that it's much more effective to incite a movement than tell people what to do. The movement happens when people communicate smoothly, when ideas spread within the community, and when peer support gives people the courage to do what they knew was always the right thing. How do great leaders create movement? They do so by enhancing communication with their tribe. Rather than command people to follow them, they establish the foundation for people to make connections. If you are going to incite a movement, you need to first improve your tribe. As mentioned earlier, the two things that turn a group of people into a tribe are a common interest and a means of communication. The communication can take place in four ways. Leader to tribe, tribe to leader, tribe member to tribe member, tribe member to outsider. So to increase the effectiveness of your tribe as a leader, there are three tactics you can employ. Transform the tribe's shared interest into a passionate goal and desire for change. Provide tools to allow members to tighten their communications. Leverage the tribe to allow it to grow and gain new members. Wikipedia is one of the most popular websites on the internet today, despite having only about 12 full-time employees and no source of revenue other than small donations. Do you know the secret to this amazing feat? It's all in how Jimmy Wales, co-founder of Wikipedia, built the tribe. Wales attracted a small group of people and engaged them in a vision. He didn't try to micromanage them or tell them what to do. He simply led. Using the internet, an ever-evolving technology that made it easier and easier for them to engage and communicate, Wales connected the tribe members to one another. He also gave the tribe a platform they could use to engage the outside world. 
That's it. The key to increasing the effectiveness of your tribe in three simple steps. Motivate, connect, and leverage. Did you know, crowds and tribes are two different things. A crowd is a tribe without communication and a leader. Crowds are fascinating, and they can create all kinds of valuable artifacts and market effects. But tribes are more effective and longer lasting. Chapter 4 You have everything you need to affect change. All that is left is for you to step up. In today's economy, winning is reserved only for those who can destroy the status quo. The people who thrive are those who push their organizations and inspire other people to change the rules. Leadership can come from anyone anywhere within an organization. Seth Godin The status quo could be how long everyone knows it takes an order to be delivered, or the standard operating procedure everyone knows you to follow for a project to be successful. The status quo might even be the way everyone expects a product to be designed, or the pricing model that everyone accepts because that's how things have been for a long time. Whatever the status quo is, turning it on its head allows you to be extraordinary. Heretics are the new leaders who challenge the status quo, the ones who get out in front of their tribes, who create movements. Seth Godin If you look around, you'll discover that the marketplace rewards innovation richly. Fresh, stylish, remarkable, and new things. The best-selling books are often surprise hits that came out of nowhere. New churches are the fastest-growing ones. Creating fresh and stylish products and services that excite the market requires initiative, and that can only be inspired by a leader. No one can manage their way to initiative. Happiness is an interesting side effect of initiative. One of the greatest ways you can spend your time is by making things that are successful. The reason is that it is extremely fun to create products and services that are remarkable, and it is very engaging to do fun work. Indeed, initiative results in happiness. No matter how hard a nail has been driven into a piece of wood, you can rip it out with a long enough crowbar. In the same vein, you can change your company, your industry, and the world with enough leverage. The good news is, the crowbars just got longer for everyone. For the six billion of us, thanks to the internet and most especially the social media, each of us has far more power than ever before. You can make content that will reach millions of people in days. You can outsource. You can amass a base of devoted fans who will voluntarily spread the words of your vision. There are many other factors involved in social media you can use to your advantage. The status quo and the people afraid of change are in big trouble. In essence, you have everything you need to create something far bigger than yourself. Those around you know this, and they are ready to follow if you're ready to lead. Chapter 5. Don't live an unremarkable life because of fear of criticism. So the market rewards innovation, and innovation brings happiness. Then why isn't everyone doing it? The answer is fear. There are many people out there today walking around with great ideas. Regular folks can very easily dream up remarkable stuff. The only thing that they lack is the will to make it happen. They're ignorant to the fact that in a battle between two ideas, the winner isn't necessarily the best one. No, the winning idea is the one with the bravest and most confident heretic behind it. According to Seth Godin, it isn't actually failure that most people are afraid of. It's blame, criticism. The reason most people live their lives without ever doing anything remarkable is because they're worried they'll be criticized. We choose not to make something innovative, not to disrupt the status quo, because deep down, we're worried that someone will hate our project and call us out on it. Who's responsible for this stupid stuff? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What a waste of resources. Sometimes, even the fear of subtle criticism, like, I'm surprised you started this project without doing more research, is enough to get most people to overanalyze, to research the idea to death, and then pull the plug on it. Hey, at least they didn't get criticized. Innovators don't let a few bad reviews hurt their feelings or ruin their day. They know that it's an honor for their work to even get a bit of criticism at all. To them, being criticized means that they've confounded expectations. That they didn't deliver the exact thing that some people expected. It means that, in fact, they've done something worth remarking on. The truth is, only the products and services that are worth talking about get talked about. If you make something boring, people won't even talk about it, let alone criticize you for it. How was your day? If your answer is, fine, then I don't think you were leading. Seth Godin So as you contemplate your next opportunity to be boring or remarkable, the challenge is to answer these two questions. How can I create something that critics will criticize? If I get criticized for this, will it have any measurable impact on me? Will I lose everything or get hit in the head with a baseball bat? If the only side effect of the criticism is that it will make you feel bad, then you have to compare that bad feeling with the perks that come with doing something worth doing. Being remarkable is profitable, fun, exciting, and great for your career. The bad feelings won't last. Chapter 6. Great leaders choose to lead because they want to see their tribe flourish. Many people have the erroneous belief that in order to lead, one needs to be an egomaniac, a driven superstar whose primary intent is aggrandizement and self-glorification. As a matter of fact, the exact opposite is almost always the case. Leaders who seek to get are far less productive than their counterparts who set out to give. The intent of a leader will have a tremendous impact on his achievements. What's even more surprising is that tribes can sniff out why someone is seeking their attention. This is why today we have CEOs who sit in cubicles just like other employees. No corner office with over-the-top decorations. There are successful religious leaders who don't have private jets or move around in limos. These leaders get their compensation from watching the tribe flourish. Their benefits aren't monetary or based on status. 
If you want to be successful as a leader, your decision to lead in the first place must be inspired by what you can do for the tribe, not by what the tribe can do for you. Caring is the key emotion at the center of the tribe. Seth Godin Below are seven core elements of leadership highlighted by Seth Godin. Leaders defy the status quo. Leaders build a culture around their vision and get others involved in that culture. Leaders have a great level of curiosity about the world they're working hard to change. In many ways, leaders use charisma to attract and inspire followers. Leaders share their vision of the future with their followers. Leaders make decisions based on their commitment to their vision. Leaders unite their followers. This is the way it's always worked out for great leaders. Take a look at leaders in your community or in your organization. You'll discover that each of them uses some combination of these seven elements. You don't need authority, power, beauty, or connection to be a leader. However, what you do need is a staunch commitment. Chapter 7. Change Takes Time. Learn to Persevere in the Face of Resistance. One thing you should know is that your vision, no matter how great and promising it is, will not be well received by people at first. Don't make the mistake of believing that people will rally to your side immediately to offer their support. In fact, the more remarkable and genuine your insight is, the greater the resistance you'll face. And when you push through and begin to make progress, your efforts will be met with even more resistance. Career paths, products, services, whatever it is, the firm believers in the status quo, the forces for mediocrity, will unite to stop you right on your track. They'll forgive no error, neither will they back down until they bring you down. It would be very easy to be an innovator if it were any other way. And if it was easy, everyone would do it and ultimately your work would lose its value. Here are the enigma. It's probably not worth the journey if people aren't pushing against your quest to do something worth talking about. So, no matter how strong the resistance gets, persist. If your company requires success before commitment, it will never have either. Seth Godin Change doesn't happen overnight. Big ideas don't happen in a flash. Neither do the right solutions succeed in the marketplace immediately. It is almost always a matter of accretion. Things fall into place bit by bit. Improvements don't happen as easy Grand Slam home runs. Visa and MasterCard didn't get where they are today right from the start. These are ideas that took years to take off. Even little things, like that restaurant that now always gets overbooked, it didn't open that way. A great part of leadership is the ability to persevere in the face of uncertainty, to stick with your vision for a long time. Long enough that those who have made it their life's goal to criticize you realize that you're going to get there one way or another. So they accept your vision and become your follower. Conclusion A tribe is a group of people with a common goal connected to an idea under a leader. Humans have always been inclined to be part of one tribe or another. Now, with the inception of the internet, geography is no longer a barrier. More than ever, influential tribes, most of which could never exist before, are now forming all over the world. And there's an explosion of new tools, such as Meetup, Facebook, and Twitter, to help lead the tribes we're forming. Thanks to the new era ushered in by the internet, it is easier than ever to be a leader, and your tribe needs you. If you have the desire to lead, then you can. People want growth, they want connection and change. The market needs you, and the tools you need to lead effectively are just there waiting. The missing piece of the puzzle is you, your vision, and your passion. The question is no longer, do I have what it takes to do that? The question is now, will I choose to do it? Most people get stuck today because they're afraid of getting into trouble. They've seen a few people get criticized for being innovative, so they've convinced themselves that the very same thing will happen to them if they're not careful. And because of this, they're stuck living an unremarkable life rather than an innovative, interesting, and happy one. The modern marketplace rewards heretics, people who are not afraid to go against the status quo. Indeed, innovation brings fulfillment and happiness. It is way more fun to make rules than to follow them sheepishly. And for the first time, it's highly rewarding to do just that. Try this. Wherever you find yourself, look for opportunities to make positive change. Don't follow some outdated rules sheepishly just because you don't want to be criticized. And remember, once you choose to lead, you'll face a lot of resistance. People will pressure you to reconsider your choice and give up. That's the job of the status quo, to shut you up and make you believe you can't be anything but a follower. But no matter how tough the resistance gets, persist. Stick to your dream, and eventually, you'll see the change you envisioned manifest.